Hello, my name is Keith Baldwin. I'm a technical solutions architect for the Campus Automation Center of Excellence. Today we'll be covering the, Cat the Catalyst 9000 switch as it's used as a policy extended node, and this will be an overview and a demonstration. For today's agenda, we're going to do a background into the classical extended node, and then we're going to cover an introduction into the policy extended node and the differences between the two. We're going to deal with some design considerations, look at the deployment of the Catalyst 9K as a policy extended node, and then we'll round it out with a lab demonstration. Classic extended nodes are layer two port extensions to fabric edge nodes. Devices connected to classic extended nodes can be authenticated and authorized by Identity Services Engine and through a change of authorization have the VLAN assigned. SGTs may be enabled with an IP pool to group mapping using VLAN to SGT maps as assigned to the fabric, and those tags will be applied as the traffic enters the fabric edge. Similarly, policy extended nodes are also layer two port extensions to fabric edge nodes. They, however, allow us to provide segmentation and group-based policies to the connected endpoint. The devices connected to a policy extended node can be authenticated and authorized by Identity Services Engine, have a VLAN assigned, and an SGT. That SGT would be carried inline tagging from the policy extended node through to the fabric edge. And additionally, SGACL enforcement can be done at egress, not only on the policy extended node, but additionally from anywhere else in the network. Policy extended nodes can only be directly connected to a fabric edge node and only singly homed. Daisy chaining is not permitted when using policy extended nodes. Policy extended nodes as a feature has been in DNA Center since 1.3.3.x and was primarily used for the IE3400 type switching. But some enhancements have been done recently to allow for the Catalyst 9200, 9300, 9400, and 9500 switches to be used as policy extended nodes. You'll note that the 9600 is not used or supported as a policy extended node. Catalyst 9000 policy extended nodes can be deployed as switch stacks, but not as stackwise virtual switching. To understand a little bit more about policy extended nodes, let's look at some traffic patterns. A host connected directly to a policy extended node, the traffic would be tagged as it enters the policy extended node. And so any host connected directly to that policy extended node, we can use egress enforcement of the tag using an SGACL. Flows from policy extended nodes to other devices connected to fabric edges. Similarly, the tag is applied to the traffic as it's entering the policy extended node. It is then inline tagged through to the fabric edge, it is transferred over to the other fabric edge through a VXLAN encapsulation, and the tag is enforced on egress towards the destination host. Traffic from host one 
to host 2, where they're both connected to policy extended nodes, would again be tagged as it entered the policy extended node on the left, inline tagged to the fabric edge, encapsulated into VXLAN, delivered to the other fabric edge, and then on the policy extended node on the right, SGACLs would enforce that tag towards the destination host. In order to deploy policy extended nodes, we're going to create an address pool. That address pool would then be assigned to the infra VN for extended node use. We would then enable the fabric edge for the extended node onboarding. This enables the port towards where we would be plugging in the Catalyst 9K. And lastly, we would plug the device in. Everything after that point is fully automated by software defined access. At this point, we're going to switch over to a demonstration. First, let's take a look at the fabric. We've got a control plane, a border node, and we've also got a fabric edge. The fabric edge is where we'll be attaching the policy extended node. Let's go to the menu, over to design, to network settings, and to IP address pools, where we will add or reserve an IP address pool. We'll click reserve. We'll then go in and we'll put in the name of the IP address pool. For type, we can use generic, or alternatively, we can use LAN. We'll choose the global pool from where we're going to pull the addressing. We will choose the prefix list length, which will be slash 24. We will enter the subnet that we will be using. We will enter the gateway. And lastly, we will assign the DHCP services and the DNS services. Once this is done, we will then click the Reserve button. And then we will confirm our IP address pool. By clicking on it, we can get all of the various details that we've previously set up. For the next stage, we will then go to Provision and Software Defined Access. We'll choose the fabric, we'll select the fabric. We will then go to host onboarding, choose virtual networks, select the infra VN, and you'll notice that we've already got the AP pool assigned, so we will add the second pool for the policy extended nodes. Here, we will choose the IP address pool created. We will choose the pool type of extended node. We will enter VLAN identifier. And the VLAN name. Once added, we will deploy it.
and applied to the fabric. The next step in the sequence, we will go to the fabric infrastructure. We will select the fabric edge that we're going to attach the policy extended node to. We will go to the port channel settings and we'll create a port channel. Here, we're gonna use the connected device type of extended node. We're gonna use PAGP. And we're gonna search for and use the 10 gigabit port that we've connect that we are going to connect our policy extended node to. In this case, it's TE118. You'll see it in an upstate here. Once this is done, we'll then click done and apply. And at that point, we've created all the settings required to connect a policy extended node. We've increased the speed of the next part of the demonstration. You can see the device joining VLAN 2047. It will get an IP address and option 43 and land on DNA Center within the PNP window. Within the plug and play window, you can see the device with 10.126.2.2 .2 as in a planned state. No intervention was required by the operator. It'll immediately go to onboarding, and then to provision state without intervention from the network administrator. Once that device is provisioned, it will then go through the next part of the onboarding sequence automatically. It's learned in the inventory. And then fully provisioned into the network. When we go to have a look at the fabric within the fabric site, we will see that device fully onboarded as a policy extended node. So let's confirm a few things. The VLANs for layer two have been provisioned to the policy extended node. You'll also notice that none of the other VRFs are there or EID space, because again, we're connected at layer two. The pack for CTS is deployed automatically, as is the environmental data, including all the SGT inf information required. You'll also notice that role-based access enforcement is enforced onto the policy extended node. From a neighborship perspective, as we start to look at the uplink from the policy extended node towards the fabric edge, we'll see that the CTS marking is set up so that it is supported from that policy extended node. Let's review some of the design caveats for the Catalyst 9000 as policy extended nodes. Catalyst 9600s cannot be supported as policy extended nodes. The switching must be running 17.3.1 or greater. Policy extended nodes must be singly honed and directly connected to the fabric edge. The fabric edge switching can be standalone, stackwise, or stackwise virtual. And policy extended node automation is disabled during LAN automation.
I hope that you found this video both useful and informative. Please stay tuned to the YouTube channel for more information about software-defined access.